hey guys welcome back to my channel and today i'm gonna be doing a really really different video it's like story time i guess you can say because i'm just gonna be talking about my labor and delivery based off like you know what happened what i went through and all of that and yeah let's just get started so i gave birth on may 5th at 6 25 a.m and she was six pounds and 12 ounces and 19 inches long and we named her annette martinez you know all the a names go in this family mine andrea and then my husband and my son matchy name alexis and then hers and hers is annette so i think it's pretty cute how you know we're all with the letter a my husband at first he was like oh no like you know let's not do an a name i was like hell no you gotta do an a name because we all have how is it that me and my son and my husband we all have a names and then my poor daughter is not gonna have an a name like that's rude yeah you can say she's unique but at the same time it's gonna be like oh like you know she's basically left out she ain't part of the group like no <laughs> we could like i knew we could find a cute name with the letter a so that's what we ended up naming her also also look at this blanket it has the little letter a right here it was my son's and now she can use it because it has the little it has the letter a and yeah so right now she doesn't want to stay still so <laughs> i'm gonna have to hold her anyways i was trying to look through my phone so i could remember and yeah it was on may 3rd around well may 4th basically Cause it was in the middle of the night it was around three in the morning where i started getting contractions they were super light but you know they were like from six to ten minutes Thank you, So I started getting them around 3 in the morning. They were almost 10 minutes apart, basically. Um, they weren't that bad until... And also, May May 4th was my due date. I made it all the way up to 40 weeks and a day pregnant, which is crazy to me because with my son, I was 38 weeks. And this one, I made it all the way to 40 with this little one. She was also 6 pounds and 12 ounces she is currently because she is one month old now she is currently eight pounds and 13 ounces so that's two pounds pretty good almost three but yeah my contractions basically for that whole day i had them i was just walking up I've, I've been walking at since 35 weeks like non-stop like like this whole this whole pregnancy i was super duper active i was expecting her to come like way earlier because i was more i've been more active like this pregnancy than with i was with my son and it was just like what the heck why aren't you born yet why am i still pregnant and <laughs> i don't know i guess every pregnancy is different this one for real caught me off guard i was expecting to have the baby at the around same time at least and yeah i ended up going to the hospital may 5th because i was you know i was having contractions all day but they weren't that bad they were doable i was like no this ain't nothing happened yet because i did go may 4th was it yeah may 4th i had to go No, May 3rd, I actually, I didn't have contractions. And I did, I go, I went to the hospital because I was bleeding. I was bleeding a lot, to be honest. And then, um, see, my whole story is all out of the place. Because I fucking, it's a month. I'm, I done forgot. I don't know, I haven't done this earlier. I should have. I was just so tired. Like, it's overwhelming having a baby and then having a toddler. So, when at first, let me See, this is, I get off topic. Oh my God. Okay, back to the story and then going back to having two kids. Lord Jesus. 
Okay, so May 3rd, I'm just scratch everything. May 3rd, I was bleeding. I went to the hospital. I, I think I was still two and a half dilated. Yeah, I was still two and a half dilated. And they just sent me home because I mean, I wasn't having any pain, no contractions or anything. I was like, you know, I'm bleeding, but why am I bleeding so much? Like. I, I didn't experience this my first pregnancy and they didn't tell me anything they just made sure like if I was okay like if the baby was okay and if I was okay and basically that's it and they just sent me home and they told me to make an appointment with my doctor so I did that for the next day which was May 4th my due date which I was gonna get induced that day if there was any available time but there was no available time and not only that i was already having contractions so they decided to wait and see what happened since i was already having contractions and um i went to my appointment on may 4th and i was like oh i'm starting to get contractions now um they're from six minutes to ten minutes apart but they weren't painful at all it's like i had just started you know having the contractions they weren't as bad basically that's how it was with my son they started off not that bad and then they got really really bad to the point where i was like oh shit like you know you know it's bad when you start crying so that's when you can't hold it anymore that's how you know you're like okay we gotta go um yeah she basically they just told me you know keep on waiting um they didn't think i was gonna give birth yet like how what makes you think i'm not gonna give birth when i'm 40 weeks i knew i was gonna give birth if i was already having contractions at 40 weeks i did have contractions when i was at 35 weeks so which it made everything it made me think like i was gonna give birth super duper early and i was like like what the fuck they came they started off the same way how they started off like you know at 40 weeks slow i doable frequent frequently and then they just stopped out of nowhere so mm, that's what i was kind of scared about also but i was like no there's no way she has to come out now um basically i just went home they just checked me again i was still two and a half like okay and i was just i went to my mother-in-law's house and we were just walking me and my little <laughs> my little sister-in-law <laughs> Por qué haces eso? <laughs> Me and my little sister in law, we were just walking around. I normally just walk around in my neighborhood. So I ended up walking on their neighborhood. And my mother in law, there's this tea. It's called Te de Ruda, I think. And it's, I guess, I didn't, I did not know. I took this for my son. I was 38 weeks pregnant with you know contractions so she was like she gave it to me and like the day after I didn't take that much I took like one cup with my son so I guess that's why it took longer for me to give birth but it like I went right the day right after and I gave birth and this time I drank me the whole pop and that tea it's like for an abortion I did not know that she just told me oh this will help you speed up your contractions and all that and I'm like oh obviously anybody who you told that you're like okay yeah of course I'm trying to get this baby out you know I search it up because you know this is she was saying oh it's good for you blah 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 and I'm like I'm gonna search it up you know just see what else is good for and that's what I I'll insert the little screenshot like this is what I find and I'm just like I told her and she's like oh yeah I knew she's like that's why I I gave it to you um, when you're about to give birth and having contractions so it can speed it up instead of giving it to you like at an early stage because it's dangerous and I'm just like woman <laughs> so that just caught me off guard but I did end up you know giving birth that same day right after and I drank the whole pot and with my son I also did end up giving birth it did speed up my contractions with my son when I drink just a cup and I didn't I did not want to drink at all because at first I did puppy at first I did like it somewhat I was like 
this kind of needs more sugar. But you know, she was like, go in there, you gotta drink it like that. So I was like, okay, whatever. Papi, deja eso. Déjalo. So, I guess I can put her back now. She's asleep. But anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, I ended up drinking that and I did, I ended up having sex that night too. I was like, okay, whatever. This is the last time we don't, we gonna have sex for a bunch of weeks too. So I don't know if that helped. To be honest, I just I think it's just it was everything in general, walking, sex, freaking that tea. I don't even know. But yeah, it was at three in the morning that I went to the hospital because I couldn't. My contractions were getting super duper bad. I was crying. I was like just crying my ass off. But, you know, at first I was crying. I was like, oh fuck, like this pain is bad. Like it's making me tear up. Like that's how I knew. I was like, okay, okay, we gotta go. We gotta go, cause this is making me cry. Puppy. He has his balloons from his birthday and he's just messing with it. It's like running out of air, so it's going so low. And that's why he's like messing with it, like punching it and all of that. Like why, couldn't you do that earlier? Just now he started messing with it. So I already had my son's bag packed, right? I had a bunch of outfits with everything that he was gonna wear, his PJs, like, and all of that. And we dropped them off at my mother-in-law's house before I went to the hospital because my dad does work in the mornings and I really, I wasn't gonna leave him, leave him with my sister. Like, they really don't like understand each other well. So that's why I prefer my mother-in-law and his his freaking cousins are there my niece and nephew so puppy so yeah we left him there i ended up waking him up he was awake for a while crying but then he went back to sleep because he was really tired he went with a walk with me <laughs> we were outside and everything super duper hot he was outside all day so he was tired and yeah i was like in the car right back so to the hospital i was like oh man this shit uh it was painful and then i was five centimeters dilated when i went to the hospital um also it was 3 a.m and i gave birth at 6 a.m 6 25 to be yeah, 6, 625 to be exact. I was waiting there. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get the... I already had in mind that I was gonna get the epidural. I also got it with my son. And I was there waiting, waiting with pain. And they were just not doing anything. Obviously, they were just doing a bunch of other stuff. Like, like they're supposed to. But it was just taking forever for me to get the epidural. I ended up getting the epidural, like the 20 minutes before I ended up giving birth. Like, who the Like, why? Like, just why? I, t I knew I wanted them to check me before I got it. <sighs> Anyways, I was nine centimeters dilated when I got my epidural. You know, they gave me the epidural and I was still, I was, mm, I was in so much pain. I was like, okay, I knew I was hella dilated because the pain was way stronger than I had with my son because I literally went to the hospital two hours later. I got the epidural. It was quick. It was no struggle. I literally, I could have done my makeup. I could have slayed that one and I didn't. I was just so tired because the night before I was with, I was up all night crying with the contractions. Cause I was like, like dilating super duper slow, but my contractions ended up ended up happening way faster, way faster than what they happened with her. Anyways, Anyways, yeah, I was nine centimeters dilated. I could have just you know freaking done it without, but to be honest, it was pretty painful. Even. Even still with the epidural towards the end because I could still feel everything. I was like, why do I still feel it? And they told me that, you know, 
now now the epidural is for you to be able to feel it still it calms down your pain but it's still you feel everything you feel everything which with my son i was so freaking numb i could not move my whole half body at all like i was literally there like this and my husband was the one picking up my legs and the nurses they had to hold up my legs for me to be able to push and with her i was able to like hold my own legs and actually push so yeah they gave me that epidural we waited 15 to 20 minutes for it to like kick in and then she ended up checking because i asked her i was like uh so how many centimeters am i dilated you know because i wanted to know it's been since it was already about to be six it was like 540 something or 550 something that's when she checked and i was nine centimeters dilated that was after you know we waited the 15 to 20 minutes for um the epidural to kick in like oh my god i was having a really 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 bad contraction when they were putting in the epidural needle like i was getting it and i was like oh like oh my god i fucking screamed so loud i was crying oh like fuck man this shit hurts like oh my goodness it's just it was it was a no-no it was a no-no for me and you know still during the 15 to 20 minutes i was like bro like come on kick in kick in and then you know it started to kick in like i started feeling my leg like one of my legs really really numb and then it started to go away i was like you know because i was like oh this one's really numb but then she's like oh yeah it's just the epidural working blah 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 and um and then it started going away and she was like oh how are you feeling i was like i'm still feeling the contractions like you know they're not as strong but i'm feeling them uh, and I was like, you know, is this supposed to happen or whatever? And yeah, she was like, oh yeah, you're still going to be feeling them and all that. It's just to ease your pain and all of that. And then she ended up going to get the, the doctor and the other nurses. So while we waited on that, you know, so we just waited on that before I could push. And then I ended up pushing. I don't know what time I ended up pushing, but... I know I gave birth at 625 and you know I was if I was nine centimeters at 550 then you know during that time basically the doctors and all of that and then I pushed but yeah I didn't push for no longer than 10 minutes 10 15 minutes I say my husband's like oh no it was faster than that but I guess since I was the one pushing I'm like bro like you know it felt like forever to be honest and it wasn't they were like, oh, everything happened so fast. Because the nurse, she thought um, I wasn't going to give birth in her shift, which, which her shift ended at 7 a.m. And then she really thought I wasn't going to give birth. And I'm like, what? How? I was in pain all along when she was there. I mean, she, she out of the first one, first nurse I got, she was the best. She really helped me through my pain. Like, you know, she talked me through it and everything. And I was like... I really like you, you know. I was in contractions, having pain. I was like, I really like you. You help me and everything. I was like, you make me feel better. <laughs> and she's like, oh, thank you. That makes me feel so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, also when I was giving birth and everything, you know, I felt her whole little body come out, and I also felt the placenta come out. Like that was painful as fuck. Versus, like I said, with my son, I didn't feel nothing. I just felt her little, uh, his little body, but it wasn't painful. Like, all of that. Damn, the difference between two pregnancies. To be honest, everything is just painful at that time. And then it goes away. And you forget about it. A couple, an hour later, you're not in pain. Like, at least you don't remember the pain. But yeah, um... For my son, my husband was just super excited for him. And then for my daughter, he about fucking busted his ass up in tears, you know. <laughs> and all of that, he got more emotional for this one. I don't know. Probably because it's a girl. And, you know, the first one, it's a boy. And he's like, oh, fuck, you know, I have my boy. And all of that. So, yeah, that's basically how my delay labor and delivery was. We were... We were there for only 24 hours because they did let me know that you know i could leave in 24 hours since i had a child already 
um, I don't know if it's for like first time moms that they let you go in 24 hours but they did let me go in 24 hours which to be honest they took forever to let me go it was one yeah it was one and that no was it three in the afternoon I can't even let me check let me check is everything is on my phone yeah it was at 3 p.m. that they let me go home so that's like a little bit more than you know 24 hours a couple hours more but I was released the next day I gave birth I gave birth on a Tuesday and I left on Wednesday and you know I came home and everything um, I also I went to go pick up my son you know I didn't come straight home but I, I went to go pick up my son and yeah let me just insert pictures of when the baby came out this is how she was looking like and then this right here was her little hospital outfit and this was what I brought her home in and this was my son's little reaction i didn't get a video i only got this picture right here um yeah he was really happy and excited about her mainly because you know i've been telling him that oh we're gonna have a baby i guess and all of that so i guess he kind of knew already and yeah he's he was like oh mine baby mine like you know my baby my baby this is my baby I'm like, yeah, this is your baby. Like, it's tuyo, it's tu bebe. He's like, oh, my bebe. I was like, yeah, tu bebe cute. He's like, see, me bebe cute. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, this wraps up my whole labor and delivery story. It was kind of out of place. It's just, you know, when you take this long to do a video, you remember some things, you don't remember other I'm pretty sure I left out some stuff, but for the main part, this is the most important things. And oh yeah, about you know two children. Oh, yeah. So the hard part, it's to be honest, it's not hard at all because my son is three. He's pretty big. You know he helps me out a lot, and the baby mainly sleeps. But the hard part is where I'm constantly waking up in the middle of the night, obviously to feed her. She well now at first it was every two hours or an hour and a half because i i guess she wasn't just eating right from my breast and um yeah i didn't get my breast pump until thursday so i was strictly just breastfeeding her and um i just had to keep on waking up and she would just stay wanting to be on the boob <sighs> so that's why i guess it was really really hard because during at night i was constantly waking up and waking up and and during the day i have to be awake obviously to take care of my son my see you know why do i even have a husband because he yeah he helps me but he's such a freaking sleepy head this is what gets on my nerves like i have less sleep with him less sleep than him and he freaking goes to sleep at any minute that he can he stayed sleeping like 24 7 like well in the beginning of you know when he was supposed to be helping me um he'd be sleeping so much i'm like dude wake up like how can you be sleeping this much and i haven't gotten barely i've barely gotten like three hours of sleep and you're non-stop sleeping like fuck like get your ass up you know um that's what that was my main problem with him also in the hospital he freaking slept the whole time so uh, it was so annoying like i don't know how he could not stay up i would wake him up to help me and then he would help me and then literally i turn my back around and he's laying in the couch sleeping when we were at the hospital and i'm like what the fuck <laughs> like if i could fall asleep that fast or just like even you know if i'm tired or whatever i still i just can't do that but he's like during the first week he would be sleeping and sleeping and sleeping and sleeping so you know it was hard i guess for both of us in the beginning because we were lacking of sleep at least i was lacking sleep and 
he wasn't lacking no sleep. It's just he's just gonna be extra and sleep even extra more. But um yeah, it's just hard because during the day I had to be awake to take care of my son. Like not take care of him specifically because he does things on his own. But you know, obviously we have to feed him. Obviously he he plays with his toys or like it's just like stuff like you know that he sometimes oh like he needs help like or to watch tv and like to go to the bathroom and like just just those type of things just i mean having to be awake to take care of him and all of that so yeah and that's basically the only thing where it was hard at was just the lack of sleep for me um but after that it's really easy with both of them they both have made it super easy for me like you know to have a routine like currently i strictly breastfeed her all night i pump um once once or twice a day and basically you know while i pump i leave a bottle for my husband to give her food i mean give her a bottle to drink while i go on my walks with my son you know because that's my form of exercise during this postpartum um you know because my son you know he needs to go outside he needs outside time he is a kid we can ju we can't just have him in the room because we really don't go out like that and all this virus stuff and like just everything that's going on it's like it's not even good to be out to be honest so we barely go grocery shopping and when we do like take we buy in bulk like we buy a lot and um we just tend to go a lot to my mother-in-law's house you know so she can see the baby she comes over or we go over just so they can see the baby and my son can spend time with my niece and nephew but yeah my son like you know he needs play time to go like outside get his energy all out so that's why i I take him on my walks he rides his little bike thing and that's basically what I've been doing lately they have my my son has been a lot of help you know if I'm if I'm like breastfeeding her and I need a, a burp rag or something I, I tell him I'm like oh puppy can you pass on me this and like you know just pass me this and this and this or grab this for me or I'm thirsty can you give me this this is a picture of my son I was breastfeeding and I was thirsty and I was telling him oh pass me a Powerade or was it a Gatorade one of the two and <laughs> he's so big now that you know he goes and get his gets me my stuff like I have a little I have a little servant basically but you know I can't be mean and make him do everything like I feel bad to be honest so this was basically my labor and delivery story hopefully this whole entire video is not that long because I do tend to ramble a lot and mainly get off topic as y'all can see so yeah make sure to stay tuned for my postpartum video I do have a bunch of pictures a bunch of freaking video like not a bunch of a bunch of little video clips for y'all to be seeing and i'm excited to go to my um postpartum appointment which is next week coming up so i will be posting after you know my my postpartum video so make sure to stay tuned for that so yeah see you in my next video bye